All right, hi. So welcome to the chaos uh, community meeting or for common March 4th. Um, so today I'll put the minutes in the chat. There you go. If you can add yourself. Great. No, people, I, 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 I did. You see I, me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of you. So you, one of you is Sabat, and the other one is a uh, beaver. That's that's how this is pronounced. That is you're excellent. A, you're a manatee. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, all right. So the, the biggest thing that I could honestly use your feedback on is, um, let's see. If you go to our issues, so right now, have you figured out who's who? Yeah, you are about. Oh, <laughs> how do you know that? Because you are the other one. <laughs> well, I don't know anything in the case of because <laughs> he sees a bat and a beaver. Uh, I, oh, and you? I see a bat and a manatee. I see. So therefore, I'm the bat. Yes. Yep. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, so um, so right now we're wrapping up the um, like the comment period is over for metrics, but there's one in common that is outstanding. And if you click on that link that I just put at the top or I'll put it in the chat here too. These are our issues. And the one number 94, do you see it? Mm -hmm. So 94 is technical forks. And there was discussion about changing the name of technical forks to clones. So if you give yourself just a second to kind of take a look at this. So Ray, Ray also mentioned technical copy or project mm -hmm. copy. Mm -hmm. uh, so do we want to, because we did spend quite a bit of time on the term technical fork. Do we want to address this in this round? Or like one option is to try to do this right now and honestly be the three of us like just making an, an executive decision on where to go. The other is that we could defer this discussion, release technical fork as technical fork and pick this up in the next round. You know what I mean? Because some metrics are modified in, in subsequent rounds. Do either of you have thoughts on this? So I will, I will say this, I think this conversation is, it's not a new conversation. This is a continuation of the conversation we were having the entire time we were working on this metric. Okay. Uh, so the technical fork name itself was a compromise uh, based on what it was named prior. And I forget what it was, but it was the, it was kind of that same situation where the term fork is really it means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Uh, and there's a lot of, uh, when you say fork, there's a lot of information that you're kind of including with that uh, kind of implicitly. If I recall the, it was originally just called fork. And was it? Tech, yeah, I think so. Like long, long ago and technical I'm, fork based on what you're saying was the kind of the result of that conversation. So I know a lot of the comments that I made in definition of this metric and a lot of the text I wrote was trying to get it to the point where basically this just describes a copy of a project made from a, uh, from a platform, right? Okay. It's, it's, there's no, uh, like the intentions are not included in the definition. This is, it's a copy, right? Mm -hmm. So forking, forking implies some sort of intention. So that's the intention to contribute back, the intention to uh, 
So you know, you know what I mean. It is, it is pretty clear. I just put the link in the chat to the markdown. So do you, it, can you give a quick read to the description and the objectives? Well, I think the text is fine. I think it's the, the I think, I think we landed where we needed to land for the, the text. Mm -hmm. It's just the, Title. I think what, what Ray, what Ray, what Ray landed on is the same thing we were kind of talking about before is that that term fork is a loaded term. So it, it means, it means different things to different people. Uh, and it, and it kind of comes attached to attention, intention, right? So if you fork something, you have an intention to do something with it. Uh, Agreed. Daniel, do you have comments? Yeah, I agree, I, I agree with what uh, Kevin mentioned. This, there's, there is certain intention, but if uh, I, I would even that depends on the on the license of the of the project, right? And and for this, I mean, uh, for, forget about the license thing. I'll start with something else before. Um, so if we go for a for a fork, the yeah, that's that's kind of a, so it, it may have two meanings, and perhaps before GitHub, um, when you fork something, that meant you that meant something like splitting the community, not something negative, but something like there's something new. Um, while nowadays, GitHub is fostering that you fork projects, right? Because that, that means that there is certain collaboration or so, which is kind of a more positive meaning for the same word. Um, so you, depending again on the, on, on, on the software process defined in a specific project, you may just clone the repository because then you are working with branches. And then instead of using your local repository, you can directly create a branch and push that, right? Or you can even work in, in a new branch. So you are kind of uh, clone in the repo, but directly working upstream as we can change markdowns, for instance, in GitHub, right? While if you don't have right access to that repository, the process to contribute is going through uh, a fork, right? If I'm not wrong. Um, so definitely if you are forking the project, that means something else, either you are contributing to, or you are forking like in, in the more like splitting or creating something new, uh, like the, the old, the old meaning. Mm. So going to the discussion of the technical fork, so I can read that the description says, the technical fork is a distributed version control copy of a project. The number of technical forks indicates the number of copies of a project on the same code development platform, which is quite accurate, but doesn't say anything related to why this is taking place, right? So, I mean, this is quite, agnostic of why this is happening. And to your point, it could be happening for very positive reasons, or it could be happening for very negative reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember having some some discussion, I don't remember with who, but it was related to what's what's the the next uh, main development line of a given project that is kind of decaying, right? So Let's imagine we have the history. Let's bring the history of OpenOffice, and uh, let's imagine OpenOffice is is in is in GitHub. So now there is a fork of the project. Let's imagine everything is in the same repository. So now someone forked the project, but and and we know that there is certain friction between the community, right, and the um, and the company hosting the project. So what's next? What all the following forks or all of the existing forks is going to be the the right one, the next to follow. Um, yeah, I don't have an answer. So for this, you need to track all of those projects, track all of the branches, activity there, and so on. So that's something like a potential. Uh, so we can use the technical forks that we have in a given project for input for that analysis at some point. Um, so it might be worth. So then maybe, Kevin, did you have a comment before I chimed in? Uh well, just to be clear, I'm, I am actually okay with the term technical fork yeah. uh, because the, I think the, the technical part acts as a, a qualifier to say, hey, it's this, this one thing that we're talking about is this one thing that may, may seem like a fork. 
Uh, but if we were to change it, I suppose I would say technical copy would be would be my choice. So I listening to these comments from Daniel and you, Kevin, I'm maybe we need to also remember that this is the common working group. And so how like a technical fork, if it's applied as something that's positive, right? Just the way that GitHub works, or it's applied as something that's kind of splitting the community. I mean, maybe that's a question for another working group. And the technical fork is a thing that happens. And we're just saying this is a common thing and we're done. And that's really what the common working group is about. And I think the I think the descriptions and the objectives, which are which are very simple for this uh, particular metric, kind of get at that point. It's it's very this is very simply a. It's the 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 number of copies that occur, and it's not even like all of the copies that occur. It's the number of the copies that occur on a development platform, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, for example, risk. I'm totally making this up at this point, could pick up another metric, which is called like community split or something like that. Or hostile, and, hostile forking or. Yeah. And they say this stems from the technical fork metric and we need a little bit more insight to understand if this technical fork is in fact a, right. a, a hostile thing or if it's a positive developmental yeah, thing. From this perspective, it, it may be worth exploring things as fork differences. So how far you are from the, I mean, in terms of new things mm -hmm. that form versus the upstream. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I, again, I think that might be another metric for another working group. Cause yep. then, yep. Okay. Actually, I like that. So we, we've actually already in the, in the filters, we've already kind of defined another thing called contributing fork and non-contributing fork. Uh, which we are using as filters. So would we even have filters on this? You know what I mean? Three, indeed. Time period, for sure. Mm. That's a fine filter. Ratio of contributing fork to total fork. So these are forks that come back, I'm guessing. The middle one. So I'm wondering if um, these on the filters, the, the oh. second time period seems like a totally normal filter in this case. I'm wondering if the latter two filters are actually metrics unto themselves. Yeah, I think if, if you, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go, go ahead, go ahead, I mean. I was just gonna say, if you were to break those down, that is where you would break down the, the different types of forks and really talk about the intentions and the way that a fork can uh, mm -hmm. affect a community. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's a lot of there's a lot of text that could be written under both of those under the last two bullet points. Yeah, and yep. and other metrics can still be those can still be used as filters in in other metrics. There's no there's no reason they can't. So just because it's a filter here doesn't mean that it can't be a metric on its own. As a matter of fact, it probably does need more definition than, okay. than what we're seeing here. I think so too. Um, Daniel, you had a comment too. Yeah, some, something, something around this as well. So it's like, um, so those sounds to me like attributes of the fork so that we can use them to filter or not. But perhaps they are, they are more for the other working groups, not sure. Because then what's, What's the purpose of the radius of contributing fork to total forks or so? It's about understanding how many contributions back we have from others, right? Uh, organizations or individuals. And if so, that's perhaps part of another discussion. Community engagement, maybe, or so. I think so. Yep. Might be, might be evolution, code development efficiency, or. Uh... So Kevin, you're comfortable keeping those two, I mean, at this point, it's looking like the metric's not going to change as we talk through this, but you're comfortable keeping those two 
second bullet points around filters and then just kind of knowing that those might lead to metrics in other working groups. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and maybe those are, maybe those are, maybe that actually is evolution code development efficient. Let's see, maybe those, that's where those metrics belong. Okay. Uh, or maybe, uh, actually, I could see non-contributing, non-contributing fork could, uh, if it's a hostile fork, it could, could end up in risk, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, to address his, do we need to add language to this metric that includes the term clone? So we already we already talked about how it's a copy. Do we need to do we need to differentiate it from the term clone? Do we need to embrace the the word clone in the definition? So technical fork is a distributed version control copy or clone of a project. I would say those are different things, right? So we have clones, we have forks. But this is this is really uh, platform specific, perhaps. Yeah. So that that's another issue. So another issue we have is that clone is not a metric that's been defined by us, and it's also a term that people have. It's there's a a clone is a very GitHub specific thing in GitHub. So we know what a clone is in GitHub. But what is a clone in GitLab? Is it the same thing? Is it uh, is a clone the same on all of the platforms? Is the term used consistently? I would probably, maybe I'll make a note here, but say that there might be another common metric that's called clone. Mm -hmm. And not added here, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I see that GitLab uses clone as well. If you want to clone. And so you... cloning cloning a project is different than a technical fork because it is cloning a project onto your local machine. Is that my that's my understanding of yeah. Okay. So a technical fork is a copy of a project on the same code development platform. And a clone is a copy of the project on your local machine hmm. or on a on a separate server or on a separate platform hmm. so then we have a difference between technical fork and fork in the general meaning of forking a project and starting something new or diverging from the original correct and the at that point the diverging thing we might call it like a diverging fork in another in another working group. Just give it a different name and we'll say clearly, this is observable through forking by looking at forks, but there's some additional work that needs to be done to determine whether or not this is a, a fossil fork. Do we need to add language to this to say, hey, this isn't a clone. A clone is this other thing. See this metric yet to be defined. It's, it's you, know me, you, you know me with saying, what things aren't. <laughs> I, I know, also... but there, there is confusion about this one, right? So we're, it's, we've got forks, copies, clones, they're all just kind of subtly different and different platforms kind of use the terms differently and people who've been doing open source for a long time use I mean, these, use like these a... words, so. Well, there is, there is this thing that if we want to be really specific, then we have that, uh, we should add to the definition of the fork that, um, uh, let me go back to the definition that I don't think we have there, but, oh, my video. Just in the description, we could just have a sentence that says not to be confused with a clone, which is yeah. a, which is a, which is a but, copy of a project to your local, to a, to a exactly, different. Exactly, but we are copying the project platform. and the history because we are copying Git. We are copying Git history as well. And that, that is for the fork and this is for for the clone. But that doesn't happen in a download or a copy, maybe, because I don't know what you mean by copy. That's all. 
we're going to come to a resolution on this today. I promise you, this is, okay. this is the one thing we do. Um, so Kevin in the description, do you have something that you might want to add? It would say like the number of technical forks indicates the number of copies parentheses, not clones. <laughs> or downloads. Or downloads. Uh, you could say that, yeah. A technical fork is a distributed version control copy of a project. OK, so that first sentence actually is that could, that could describe a clone, that first sentence. Yeah, this contains the uh, history. The second sentence, the number of technical forks indicates the number of copies of a project on the same code development platform. That sentence is more accurate. For a fork. For a technical fork, yeah. So the, 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 the first sentence, if you read that first, you can say, oh, this could be a clone we're talking about. So maybe my suggestion is that we actually move clone the, the metric of clone and maybe even downloads to something that we talk about in common and then i'll put that to clones and clone and down downloads um and then in the and then we don't do any disambiguation at this point like we don't say this is like we just keep this as is but as we develop clones then we can go back to the technical fork and adjust metric. the language and, and just maybe, say you know and maybe link to each other yeah right to say not to be confused or to not to, to help with disambiguation regarding clones please see this one right here and likewise mm -hmm. what do you, what do you, i just put that in the notes what do you think of that Okay. Okay. And I think we just wait until we have the metric developed as opposed to trying to forecast that we will develop it. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with the text that we have in anything incorrect with the text that we have in there. Yep. And and honestly, I'm not a uh, the name that we've landed on doesn't bother me a ton either. It doesn't me either. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna put a comment in, oops, in this. I'm gonna say, yes, this metric is tricky. It's done March. wrapping up this issue. So give me a second here. So I'm basically just saying this metric's a bit tricky. In the meeting today, we decided to keep it as is. However, this includes some work that will need to be done. Right, the work that will need to be done in the future this work will include new metrics clones and downloads and will likely include new metrics regarding the nature of the fork of the technical fork, hostile or developmental to be considered in other working groups. Okay, super helpful, thank you. I noticed that this metric does not contain the new template, or it is it not using the new template. Uh, at the end of references, there should be a, 
uh, contributor heading. Yeah, did we, I'm wondering, did we decide? I'm wondering we, if this is like kind we, of a, a tiny issue. We did issue. decide, so we decided to add that to all of the metrics released this release. Okay. And my guess is that none of the metrics released this release has that heading currently. Uh, and I would, I would further say that uh, they don't have the names associated with it either. So I would guess that that's is, a, go ahead. Uh, maybe, maybe I should send an email out to the uh, community asking the working groups to uh, address that. I'm wondering if it's a residual of the metrics were in progress when we decided to add that many of them were done many of them were done way before we decided to add that like the the dni metrics were done at the the like really early so they've okay. been ready to go for months why don't we um, i would actually suggest we just at this point forward any new metric i don't know it seems hard it would seem hard to go back to say dni and ask for that type of info yeah, I was just thinking about the uh, even, even just going through and figuring out who contributed on the metrics uh, uh, without looking at, I suppose the the Google Sheet or the uh, mm -hmm. the meeting minutes. I suppose that's how you have to do it, right? Yeah, you'd have to. Yep. But even then, somebody could be in the minutes and <laughs> didn't didn't ever open the doc. Yeah. So I'd say when we start templating new things, like in uh, in DNI, I just templated a new metric for onboarding, and um, like that would that's pretty easy, right? We were all kind of there. Uh -huh. I can track that one a little bit more easily. So we'll just add it, add it from now on. Okay. Yeah, I think so. For any new templated ones. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's good to go. Thank you, you two. I'm serious. That was helpful and very thoughtful to, to not change anything, which is good. And then also to kind of think about how this can um, inform the future. And I think I captured that in the minutes. All right. Um, I guess, you know, we have 15 minutes. Um, Daniel, if you look at the mm -hmm. the minutes, there were a couple. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at any of these. Oh, you mean for the um, no new metrics? No problem. Okay. And so, honestly, maybe the one thing to do here is I'll for the metric spreadsheet. I was to add. So if you take a look, maybe we'll just wrap this up then. Um, just here. So if you go to the metric spreadsheet, you can just kind of track along with me. So maybe So maybe I'm in row 24 and 25. Do you see me there? We could put clones mm -hmm. and downloads. These two metrics. We want to add contributing and non-contributing forks to evolution as a considering as well. I don't know. I was wondering, do you think those are common things or do you think? Uh, I, think that, I think there's a very, it's a very good fit for code development efficiency. 
however, I think there are other places it could it could exist in risk as well. Uh, mm-hmm. It, I think, common. The way common is running right now, it's it's kind of it's you can kind of grab whatever you want, right? It's because you can make the argument that uh, most metrics are are common. Uh, so if the if we want to do that work in common, I think that's fair to do. Uh, so interestingly, if you go click on the risk tab in the spreadsheet, uh-huh. and do you see row thirty four? Quarks. <laughs> right. What does that look like? I wonder. Let me see. What are the number of technical forks of an open source project on? code development platforms. That's like the same as the other, same as what yeah, we they just, co- they just copied it. So maybe this is better. Like I'm thinking maybe this is, I'm back in the spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. Like this would be like hostile forks. Mm, yeah, maybe or uh, or non-contributing forks. Yeah, something like that. I think it fits better here. So I mean, hostile hostile forks would definitely be a risk factor, but does but but does hostile forks does that account for all non-contributing forks? All right. So if you It's, it's so contributing non. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, I was saying that it's a subset of them, right? The hostile forks yeah. versus them. Contributing and non-contributing talks directly to efficiency of the process. So then maybe I'm over an evolution right now. Code development efficiency, is that what you said? Yeah. Then you think that would be like a contributing fork, maybe? I think it would be both because you can look at the 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 ratio of contributing to non-contributing forks is uh, is probably the uh, okay. Uh, it's probably the the metric, right? Okay, at least I think we're capturing it, at least in the spreadsheet. Um, all right, I think this was this was good. Anybody have anything else that they want to talk about common wise? I'm happy with kind of putting closure to the metrics. I think the rest are good. Kevin, Daniel, you're good. Mm-hmm. All right, 10 minutes back to your life. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks for coming, everybody.